So it was my favourite week this week on Bake Off, pastry week. I love making pastry. I put a vote again on my Instagram account, um, you might have voted, and it was so close between pasties or eclairs. 51% of you voted for pasties, so that is what we're going to make today. I'm winging it. That's what's happening. I'm winging it because I thought they got to do what they wanted in a pasty. And so what would I really like in a pasty? So I thought I would make a cheesy leek and potato pasty. You want to add a bit of bacon? Not a bad idea. You could also add some chunks of chorizo in there. This is really whatever you want to bung in a pasty. Um, give it a go. What I've done, first of all, is I've taken two medium sized potatoes and I've cubed them up really small and I've just put them onto parboil for literally five minutes. They normally go into Cornish pasties raw, but then you have the meat and uh, the onions. Onions have quite a lot of water in them to kind of steam and cook the potato. So I just wanted to give them a little bit of a head start. Five minutes cooking there and then I'm just gonna drain them and then let them let them sit until I'm ready to use them. And then in a frying pan here, I have melted down 30 grams of unsalted butter and I'm going to add two leeks to that. The quantities might be off because as I said, I'm winging it. But if you've got extra mixture, that is no bad thing. And also for the cheeses, I would recommend just going with a cheddar or a red Leicester, something with quite a lot of flavour. I've got a little bit of Cheshire left over and some lovely Lancashire cheese. I've chosen quite strong flavours because you want it to hold up in the pasty, be a good cheesy pasty. I'm just going to let those leeks cook down in the butter until they're nice and soft. And in the meantime, I've weighed out 30 grams of plain flour. So it's the same as the butter, 30 grams of each. And I've also got some milk on the side. This is actually the milk that I used last week and I don't really use whole milk apart from when I'm baking. So I'm just going to use this milk up. If you want to put a bit of tang in there, I've got some mustard. I think mine's out of date, but I'm going to use it anyway. Just use what you've got. The cheese that I've just mentioned, I've just roughly chopped it. You don't need to uh, grate it because it's going to go and melt in there. If you enjoy cheese as much as I do, probably want to have a little bit spare to add some grated stuff um, inside your pasty. So I've got some red Leicester for the job, but again, use whatever cheese you've got, whatever cheese you like. I've swapped the pans because I could sense that the frying pan was gonna get very overwhelmed. So I put this in a bigger pan. The leeks have been cooking now for a couple of minutes. If I was just gonna make these leeks a sort of a side, I would cook them a bit more, but please bear in mind that they're gonna be going in the oven inside a pastry case, so they're gonna cook more anyway. So at this point, when they're not quite as I would like to eat them immediately, I'm gonna put in the flour and just cook that off for one to two minutes because you want the floury kind of texture to go. So just keep stirring it because otherwise it will gather on the bottom of the pan. And then when that's been cooking for a couple of minutes and it starts to brown, then you can add your milk. You don't want it to be too liquidy because it will come out of the pasty. So let's go with 200 mils. I'm doing it by eye. If you want to measure out 200 mils of milk, be my guest. And then you want to keep stirring this until it thickens because otherwise you'll get lumps. The milk's going to heat up, that's going to go lovely and thick and then we're going to add our cheese to the mixture. That's starting to go really nice and thick so we're going to add a bit of seasoning. I'm going to put in my bit of mustard. Another option that I think would be great, just a little, not even a full tablespoon, teaspoon. I also think what would be great in here would be Worcester sauce, Worcester sauce and cheese, winner. And I'm not gonna salt it yet because cheese is quite salty, but I'm gonna put in a good grinding of pepper. Oh, how shitty. And then just give that a mix in until your mustard's disappeared into the sauce. in with the cheese and all you want to do is just stir it the cheese will melt 
But the reason that we're making the filling first is so that it has time to cool while we make our pastry because the one thing that you cannot have when you make any kind of a pie or a pasty is hot filling going in cold pastry because the most important part of that pastry is your fat element so either butter or lard or vegetable shortening and if that gets warm before it's got shocked in the oven it's not going to be nice and crispy or flaky so the most important thing is making your filling first and then letting it cool down and then you're putting cold filling on cold pastry and it doesn't matter if the cheese isn't fully grated because then you're just going to get lovely pockets of cheese in your pasty i've also <laughs> i've also gone out to my little balcony and picked up some fresh parsley if you want to put herbs in it's not a bad idea uh, chives would work well i've just got some parsley if you want to put dried parsley in or if you just want to miss it out totally fine you might have noticed that i took my potatoes off a little while ago i'm now going to add them to this mixture turn the heat off and leave it to cool down and in the meantime we're going to make our pastry oh parsley that's what i'm going to add it's off the heat we've got potatoes leeks cheese look at that goo bit of cheese time for the pastry and believe it or not i'm going to use a recipe for the pastry from this lovely book called pie i think this is going to be like a flaky but a substantial pastry because it needs to hold all that lovely filling and like you need to be able to grab it in your hand i have sifted into this bowl 450 grams of strong plain flour so like bread flour I've got 100 grams of butter and 100 grams of lard, both very, very cold, and I'm gonna grate them into the flour. Grating butter is a bit weird, but just go with it. Because usually you would mix it in so it looks like breadcrumbs. That's what a normal short crust pastry is. But I suppose with this, you're getting little pockets of fat, and as they heat up, it expands. So you're gonna get lots of nice sort of layers, but without the effort of making puff pastry. The reason that you're using two different kinds of fat in this is that the lard gives it the fatty quality and the butter gives it the flavour. So whenever I make short crust pastry, I always do half and half and it just, it just is so much better. We're just going to mix this in with our hands. Again, should have used a bigger bowl. Just kind of pull it apart because I do realise that this is sort of separated. So you do have to do a bit of that short ready short crust pastry sort of maneuvering to get it to separate. This also has a pinch of salt in it. I forgot to mention that. So when it's all kind of evenly distributed, you just wanna add enough cold water that it brings it together. So I'm gonna do this with the end of a fork just so that my hands don't end up. And to make sure that this water was cold water, I just put a cube of ice in but you only want to add like a tablespoon full at a time and then mix it because you don't want to add too much water you just want to bring this together to be a dough so just keep adding a little bit at a time and really give that a good mix it in i just need a bigger bowl i always do this okay i reckon that should be the last the last of the water if your bowl is big enough you can just keep doing this and bring it together in the bowl but i think i'm going to migrate to the work surface because this is getting a bit ridiculous do not work this too much i'm just bringing it up so that i've got all of these bits so when you've got it all to come together all we're going to do is pop this in a bit of cling film and put it in the fridge for 20 minutes. Okay, so we've had that in the fridge getting nice and cold for about 20 minutes. I've preheated the oven to 180 degrees fan. I want to make six pasties out of this dough. If you want to make them a little bit bigger, you can do four. Um, so I've got a bowl here and I'm going to cut around this bowl. This is about six inch diameter. If you want to make four pasties, then do an eight inch diameter, like the bottom of a cake tin, for example. So I want to cut this into six small, smaller pieces. 
if you want to weigh it out, if you want to be very bake off about it, weigh it out and then work it out. But I'm not going to do that because it's late and I'm being quite lazy today. I just want to eat the pasty. So we just leave those other bits to the side and we're just going to roll out each one, one at a time. So try and get it in as circular shape as possible. And just keep turning it as you roll it so that you don't have loads of excess pastry to trim down. Again, it's quite thick, that's perfectly fine. It needs to be a strong, it needs to have a strong hold. You might even get more out of this than planned, but we'll just see how we go. So cut around whatever circle shape you've got. I'm just gonna keep the excess there. So that I would say is about half a centimetre thick. Normally if you're making a tart, <laughs> if you're making a tart or anything, you'd want it to be nice and thin, but pasties got to be sturdy. So we've got the mixture here that has cooled down a tablespoonful, not loads. You don't want to over cramp your pasty. So you can see I've put it in the middle, a bit of extra cheese, a bit, a tiny bit of extra cheese. And I'm going to just pop that on the top, not loads, just a little bit extra. I've got an egg wash and I'm just going to put that around the edges of the pasty. And then we're going to try and gather it up in the middle. So this is where we find out if we've got too much filling. I think we're okay. But you just want to make sure that it's all completely sealed. Looks like a massive dumpling at the moment. And if you want, you can just crimp it like that. I'll do a couple of different ways so you can see. So this one is crimping. So you take two fingers and an index finger and you just push like that in the pasty until the end. So you've got a lovely bit of crimping there. You're then gonna put a hole in each side just for the steam to come out. And we're gonna put that on our tray and then give it another egg wash. To do the other style of crimping, we're just gonna, I might have overfilled this one, that's fine. Just close it shut, take the end and just push it over like that and do the same thing, just keep going along, put, almost pull it out and then push it back in. And you just keep moving along like that. Until you've got a really nice crimped edge. You can kind of hide any bad bits. So that is a lovely crimped edge. So that one's burst open. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll out the rest of these. I think I'm going to get more than six, possibly eight. Um, and then we're going to put them into the oven for 25 to 30 minutes. Um, make sure to egg wash them. Make sure that you poke a couple of holes in each pasty. That's the one that we've crimped on the top. Hello. And then I'm gonna find a good one. And this is the other bit of crimping that I showed you. I haven't, op I haven't cut into any of them yet. So I'm gonna do that now. So you can see inside the lovely saucy potato. The pastry is really nice and flaky. I'm gonna go in. Yeah. That is a good pasty. Give it a go.